Hi, I'm Josh, and this is the Science Classroom. In this video, we're going to talk about Pascal's principle and pressure. When you squeeze the end of a tube of toothpaste, the toothpaste comes out the open end, and there's a scientific principle for why this happens. When you squeeze the tube, you apply pressure to the fluid inside, the toothpaste, and that pressure gets transmitted through the toothpaste until it merges from the open end. So what are we going to learn in this video? First, we will define pressure and learn an equation that we can use to calculate it. Then we will learn how to use Pascal's principle to compare force and surface area. At the end of the video, there will be a couple of problems so that you can check your understanding. Pascal's principle is named after the French scientist Blaise Pascal, who discovered that an applied pressure can be transmitted throughout a fluid. Pressure is a force that's exerted over a surface. As an example, air pressure is the force of all the individual air particles colliding with an object from all sides. The equation to solve for pressure is pressure is equal to force divided by area. The SI unit for pressure is the Pascal, PA. Although Pascals are a pretty small unit, and pressure is more commonly described in kilopascals or KPA. To use this equation, we need to use Pascals, not KPA. And so a lot of time we're going to have to perform the conversion between pascals and kilopascals. Let's try using this equation. Standard atmospheric pressure is about 101 kilopascals. How much force does the atmosphere push down on a person? Assume the surface area of a person is 1.90 meters squared. Let's first write the equation. Pressure is equal to force over area. We want to solve for force, so we will multiply both sides by area. That will cancel area on this side and move it over to the other side. Now let's look at our data. We were given pressure in kilopascals, so we're going to have to convert that to pascals. To do this conversion, multiply the value that is in kilopascals by 1000. That will change it over to pascals. We have 101,000 pascals. Now we can multiply that by the area, 1.90 meters squared, and we get an answer of 182,000 newtons. That's the force exerted on that person. Now Pascal's principle is the idea that the pressure is transferred through a fluid and that the area that the force of the fluid is applied is a significant factor. Pascal's principle explains how a hydraulic lift works. A pressure is applied to a small area at one end and the fluid that's in the system transfers that pressure to a larger area. It's the same amount of pressure that was put into the fluid but now it's exerted over a larger area and so you could lift very heavy objects like a whole car. Here's what Pascal's principle looks like in the form of an equation. We have input force over input area is equal to output force over output area. Let's see how this equation works. A hydraulic lift is used to lift a car that weighs 3,700 newtons. The car is pushing down on a 2.8 meters squared platform. Calculate the force that must be exerted on a 0.072 meters squared piston in order to lift the car. First, let's write out our equation. Now let's organize the data. So the input force is not known, and that's what we're going to solve for. So we need to look at the problem and find the area that matches that input force. That would be this, the piston, 0.072 meters squared. So that leaves 3,700 newtons as the output force and 2.8 meters squared as the output area. We need to rearrange the equation to solve for input force. We can multiply both sides by input area. That cancels input area on this side and moves it over to the other side. Now plug everything into the equation. When we solve, we get 95 newtons. So it requires an input force of 95 newtons to lift the car. So in this video, we learned that to calculate pressure, we can use the equation P equals F over A. Pascal's principle relates force to surface area using the equation input force over input area is equal to output force over output area. Thanks for watching. You can support the Science Classroom by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. 